enrollment, first year enrollment um, here at Niagara University. So first, let me just start off by um, just saying thank you for, for logging in tonight. I'm taking some time. I know each and every one of you, you're, you're starting to get to a point where you might be completely Zoomed out or Google Meet, so you might just be tired of the virtual thing. Um, but I really do appreciate you guys um, taking the time to log on tonight um, and hear what our sport management team has to say um, here from Niagara University tonight um, as, we, as we talk to you a little bit about um, the university and the program itself. So again, thank you for doing that. Um, what I'm going to do um, first, I've got um, one more admissions person here with me. Um, and if I could, I'm going to have Aaron. Uh, Aaron, if I can have you introduce yourself as well, um, please do. Sure. So I'm Aaron Clark. I am one of the newest admissions counselors with the team at Niagara. Um, I work with students mostly in the southern tier and in eastern Pennsylvania. So if that's any of you, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, but I'm representing the school the rest of the College of Hospitality. So if you ever want to explore what else we have to offer, I'm an excellent resource for that. Yes, Erin is going to, um, Erin is a great addition to our team. Um, she's a, she was also a student here in Niagara. So if you need, you've got questions from that perspective as well, um, please, she's going to be a great resource. Even if she's not your admissions counselor, um, great person to talk to. Um, I enjoy talking with her all the time. So um, just know that we're all here. Aaron, if you could, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put my information in the chat so you guys can take that down and reach out to us. Um, I was, I did lie a little bit. I actually have two people here from uh, admissions. And since he's here and he's got his video on, um, Bob, if I could have you just say hello as well, that'd be great. Sure. Thanks a lot, Ben. Um, I, as Ben said, I'm Bob Murphy. I, I work with Ben in, um, <clears throat> in admissions. Um, along with Aaron, uh, I wanna welcome everybody as well. I, I think that this department, sport management, is just one of the most exciting departments that we have on campus. The kids that come here, fabulous education, but more importantly, the experiential side of it, the experience that you get in the exciting, exciting jobs that you can get in this field when you graduate uh, with all, all of the uh, contacts that the faculty have in this field. It's one of the best in the country. So uh, hopefully uh, you're gonna enjoy what you see and then we'll see your application and we'll see you on campus. Thanks, Bob. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm, I'm part of the admissions team here, um, but I'm also here as a representative um, on the sport management side as well, as um, I am kind of the liaison between the admissions department and the sport management team. Um, so that's part of my role here as well. So know if you have any questions or you need to get in contact with anybody here tonight. Um, you know, I'm sure they're going to throw their information in the chat for you so you have it. Um, but just know that I, I'm here as a resource. Um, I'm also, I'm lucky enough, I get to be a part of that experiential learning. Dr. Ted Cuz, well, um, he's showing his hoodie right now. I'm a part of the uh, Niagara Power Baseball program that the university owns and operates. Um, I'm not going to steal too much thunder on that. I'm sure um, Dr. Tutka is going to go into that. Um, but I, I'm lucky enough I get to see both sides. And I'm in complete agreement with what Bob just said. Um, I don't think you're going to find a, a, any program um, related in the sport industry like what Niagara does. So, uh, again, I hope you kind of enjoyed tonight. And then I'm going to turn it over to the sport management team here for a little bit to do some intros, um, however you guys want to do that. And then i let you guys run with this. And like I said, uh, if you guys got questions, throw them in the chat. I'm going to track those. And if we don't answer them during the actual presentation tonight, I will um, be sure at the very end we will have a Q&A time where I allow um, time for us to answer those questions. So, um, Mike, you've got your um, microphone unmuted, so I'm going to turn it to you right now. Huh. Okay. Actually, um, we got a couple of folks here with us as well. You mentioned Dr. Tutka, who you'll probably hear from shortly. Uh, we have Dr. Uh, Young Soo Choi, who's our interim dean. Uh, Dr. Choi, if you'd like to say hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and a few words. Uh, they're providing yeah. us with the leadership here uh, through this period. So glad to have you with us yeah. today. We also uh, have Trevor Howell, who's <laughs> one of our uh, best and brightest students. Trevor, you out there? 
Wow, yeah, hi, I actually got a, that's a nice little introduction, I like it. Uh, well, hello everyone, uh, I'll really quickly go over everything I do, um, because I really don't want to take a lot of time, but I am a sport management major and luxury hospitality we'll operator. Go through everything you here in Niagara. I'm, I'm already getting cut in, wow, man. <laughs> quickly, really quickly go through everything you do, because it's a pretty long list. I, I, I'm going to concise it, I'm going to make it a short list today. So, those are my two majors, um, I'm looking into picking up a theater minor, I'm also a... Um, in, involved with our acapella group here on campus. I am the co-founder of the Sports Entertainment Club here on campus. I'm a member of our Sport Manager Association, our Club Management Association of America, and I also do a few little positions on the admissions team here at Niagara. And now, now I'll cut it off and I'll hand it off to you, Professor Tutka. Thanks very much. Uh, it just kind of points out what all the things you can do at a place like Niagara University. Um, a lot of uh, different tentacles that you can reach out with and satisfy a lot of interest that, uh, that our students might have. Um, a little bit about the sport management program before I get into our presentation. Um, it's about 20, 20 years old now. Um, and um, I'm very proud of it because uh, essentially I started it. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Murphy said, um, one of the things we are really proud of and really excited about is, uh, is our experiential side of it. Um, you know, I have, every year there's about 300 plus sport management programs in the country and they're all turning out uh, students with bachelor's degrees. Um, and frankly, the difference between them and us and is what we um, have our students do, what we ask them to do, what they enjoy doing uh, to make that degree, their degree more marketable and, and uh, more advantageous for them uh, when it comes time to find jobs and internships and careers and, and, and the like. Um, and that's what it's all about. You know, today we'll talk about a lot of things that would be really interesting to you as students um, and at some point in time, your parents will be here with you and your parents are going to want to know where you're going to get, be able to go out to go to work and get a job. Um, and, uh, you know, for us, it's really important. We cover both of those sides of it for you. So um, I have a, uh, I am scared to death here because I have a, a little PowerPoint presentation that we use as a showcase. Uh, and sometimes I, I can share the screen well and sometimes I can't. Um, and I know, Ben, I send it to you just in case. I don't know if, uh, if you had gotten it or not. So, uh, but uh, let me but I, try this. What I'll this. do, I'll go ahead and make you the host. Okay. Um, so that way you can you can share. All right. Here goes nothing. Should be good. Okay, should be good. Yeah, you, you haven't seen me at work yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me see what I can do here. I gotta I gotta do this and do that and share. How's that look? Are we good? I can see it. Okay. All right. What I want to do today, um, you know, as I want to tell you, you know, if, if, if I go back up here, I'll, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's essentially. Turn, turn, know, on, turn on the PowerPoint, Sherry. Uh, all right. Where is it? The, the big slideshow button down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Big slideshow button? The slideshow button in the bottom right-hand corner. So that you can't see the whole, or you can just do present from the beginning. I'm going to present from the beginning. Oh, there you go. That thing. Okay, got it. What All a right. teamwork. <laughs> That's how we do it here. Yeah. All right. the, the idea is, the, is, you know, not only why sport management, but why sport management at Niagara University. As I said, there's about 300 plus programs around the country. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what we do here and how we pull it all together. And, you know, I think you heard Trevor mention the, the, a lot of the things he, do, he does. And if you look at what, what I'm going to talk to you about, you're going to see that this is, this is what we, you know, we're able to provide. All right. And, and I'm going to go through these things, but what I'm going to cover here is the fact that we're in a hospitality and tourism management college, which is, is fairly unique around the country. Um, there's only about maybe five or six sport management programs that are, that are housed in those kinds of, of, uh, of departments. Um, uh, second is we're a liberal, a, a professional program, which means we, we assume that our students are looking to get trained to go find a job, but we are located in a liberal arts university, which allows you to, uh, to really expand a lot of your skills. Um, you, it's a small school, so you're gonna get personal attention. Um, we are really flexible and we think we're innovative in a lot of the things we do. And um, when you hear about the Niagara Power, among other things, I think you'll, you'll see that. Um, I'm also going to talk to you about what we expect out of our students, which, as I said earlier, is, is the thing that, that I think makes our degrees uh, very marketable. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the student experience. Okay. 
Um, I said we're in a hospitality college. Uh, our hospitality college has been uh, ranked in the top 20 in the country for years. We have a, a hotel restaurant management degree, tourism management degree, and our sport management degree. Um, as a college, we provide lots of opportunities. Uh, if you want to be international, we can, we, can, we can do some things. We do do some things uh, in, in international sport programs along with our hospitality people. Um, we have a, a tradition and culture and history of success in experiential opportunities. In fact, we have an 800-hour experiential requirement, which frankly is about half of, uh, of what you'll do. Most of our students end up doing twice that much. Uh, we have a great active and enthusiastic alumni um, and a great network of professionals in the field. And we pride ourselves very much throughout our college on our placement rate, both, uh, both working within and outside of the, uh, of the field of study. Okay, so we offer a bachelor's degree in sport management. Okay, and we have uh, we focus on our sport on sport operations. And if you look there, you can see the things that uh, that our students you know can train themselves for and go out and prepare to work in these fields. Um, you know, and you can see things like program management, whether it's recreational or um, you know high school or you know college sport programs, not for profits like boys clubs and YMCA's and so forth. Certainly events, events and facilities. Um, you know, whether it's professional sports, college sports, um, a great venue or great avenue for your first job. You know, revenue management, sales, marketing, fundraising, promotions, uh, those kind of things. Uh, concession management, which is kind of unique for us because we also have a, a, a food beverage management program that you can combine with those. And then finally, external relations, you know, communications, media relations, our, our ESPN3 program, which I perhaps Dr. Tutka will touch on later. And then finally, um, in our college, we have the only uh, master's degree program, um, which is our, our master's degree in sport management. Okay, I did mention to you that we are in a liberal arts setting. Okay, so you're gonna get that, half of your degree is gonna be that professional preparation in sport management. The other half is gonna be the liberal arts training, which uh, teaches you, th you know, the thinking and writing, communications, critical thinking, problem solving. Um, you know, to be that more interesting person that you expect you'll be when you come out of college. Um, and it gets you to know some other people on campus and it gets you thinking about some other things um, that you might find interesting and, and able to explore those a little bit more as well. Okay. Uh, also mentioned, because we're small, you get a lot of personal attention. When you come to Nye University and major in sport management, your advisor is one of the faculty. You will see us individually, in person, uh, as best we can, uh, in, given the, given the uh, current pandemic, uh, each and every time, whether it's for your selection of classes, finding internships, finding jobs, um, you, know, you know, career advice, networking, whatever, you will get to see if an individual faculty member, pretty much whenever you need to. Uh, would that be a fair statement, uh, Trevor? Um, I mean, we're, we're here, we're available, we're not hard to find. Uh, and there's not so many of you that you got to wait in line, okay? But we have an assistant to the dean who will help you with, uh, with you know, selecting classes, adding classes, dropping classes, uh, making sure your paperwork is in order at all times. We have a really active, energetic Office of Career Services, which helps with things like uh, with career fairs and, 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 and job fairs, with career placement, with internships, uh, with resume writing, preparation, uh, all the things you need to take that degree that we're giving you and put it to good use. Um, our university departments are really helpful. And again, because we're small in size, you have access to the registrar's office, the financial aid office. Uh, uh, you know, now with uh, we're finding out the, the very helpful, our health services office and our, uh, and our counseling offices have been very important in the last six months, given, uh, given all that we're going through with uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, issues. Um, and then the other piece that, that, we, that we think are really, uh, really different is our alumni mentors. Our alumni association gives back. They, are, they appreciate what they've done here. They've all got out, gone out and got great jobs and they're really interested in interacting with our students, uh, inviting them to their place of work, coming back to our campus to interact with them and so forth. Um, and we find that they're really um, uh, a good, good resource for us. Um, 
I'm not going to click on this YouTube link. Uh, if anybody would like this PowerPoint, I can certainly send it to you. The reason I'm not is because, um, you know, when we're on Zoom and we're sharing like this, they don't, don't always come through really well. Uh, but this is a testimonial that we do at, uh, at one of our uh, one of our sport management summits on campus where we've interviewed four or five uh, of our alums who are professionals in the field working at Harvard University, New York Jets, uh, the, the Mid-American Conference, Damon College, um, and uh, just a testimonial to the fact that they were back and, and what we have done with them and for them, okay. Um, I mentioned, we mentioned that the College of Hospitality Sport Management is no different um, we have a significant uh, requirement of experiential learning. I mentioned 800 hours. Uh, we, as I said, our students do more than that. We'd like you to see you do more than that. Uh, but we, all of our majors up here in the college are required to do that. Um, and in sport management, you know, we create a lot of these things. We also expect you're, you're going to create a lot of the things that you might be interested in as well. Uh, some of the things we do as a college or have done in the past, uh, we've been to many Super Bowls, okay? uh, worked many Super Bowls, worked the NFL experience, worked um, at the actual stadium on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we have a great partnership with Pagula Sports and Entertainment. Uh, if you're not familiar with them in the, from the area, uh, they are the people who own the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabres and the Harbor Center um, and uh, maintain the Key Bank Center uh, downtown Buffalo as well. Uh, we have a pretty innovative spring training program where we bring students uh, during our week around spring break. Um, and we work two spring training sites. We, we work spring training baseball games for about seven or eight days uh, in Jupiter and West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, and it's a great experience to a lot of different kind of things. And, uh, you know, it's really a good trip. Uh, we've worked any number of NCAA tournaments, uh, basketball, hockey, volleyball, you know, uh, uh, soccer in the past, a bunch of things. That wherever we can find a place to go, we try to go. Uh, major golf tournaments, both uh, PGA and the amateur. One of our big trips now is the uh, Golf Week National Amateur Championship in Hilton Head. It's in October. Unfortunately, we, we're not going this year, but it's about a 1,000 golfers, eight courses, and um, our students manage a tournament on each of those courses. And then finally, any number of professional and college sport organizations in Western New York, uh, wherever we can find an opportunity, we're, we're always willing to help. Um, and then the thing that, you know, again, we'll talk about a little bit later is, uh, is the Niagara Power experience. Uh, the uh, Collegiate Woodbat Baseball League uh, team that we own and operate, Dr. Tutka, I'm sure will talk to us more about that. Okay. Um, an advantage we have, we're, oper we, we're, we're situated on a uh, Division I athletic uh, campus program. Uh, so, you know, our, our basketball teams, our, our hockey teams, um, you know, we charge to get in. We sell sponsorships. We market them. We, uh, we have TV opportunities for them. We have an ESPN3 program that uh, promotes their, and, 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 uh, and uh, publish public publicizes them as well. So it's a great experiential opportunity right here on our campus for you. Um, and then throughout the, uh, throughout the country, a lot of our alumni uh, from years gone by, have, a lot of our alums work in the event facility management field. And we also do a pretty good job of, of working in recreational sports, not-for-profit uh, uh, organizations like boys clubs, the YMCAs, and certainly local government uh, rec programs and so on. Uh, next couple of slides, I'm not going to read them to you. I just want you to take a look at the kinds of places that our students are, you know, have either worked, interned, where we have current students or former students who have worked there, uh, or we have some kind of network there. If you look at that, you see minor league hockey, minor league baseball, major league baseball, the UFC, soccer, NBA, NFL, uh, the golf courses, uh, uh, road racing tracks, you know, um, Watkins Glen, Daytona, and so forth. Uh, so in the professional field, you know, we have a, just a wide array of places where we have some inroads that we can help our students with. Take it down a, a notch and you look at some of the professional organizations that employ our grads in some kind of sport activity. And you're looking at places like uh, Delaware North and uh, Levy, uh, Levy Restaurants who are concessionaires, you know, Blue Cross Arena, uh, Key Bank Center, 
Greensboro Coliseum Complex, you know, Wild World of Sports, all sports venues, Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida, New Era Sports Apparel. So a lot of professional organizations with with some connection to the sports field. Uh, going further, uh, a bunch of colleges around the country and in Canada, frankly, where we have had our students uh, find some opportunities, where we have students working and we have networks created. There is probably, you know, if I went through this list, I could probably find a few more year after year. But again, a chance if you're looking for a career in college sports, there it is. Okay, I talked about recreational sports, you know, any number of different types of organizations, boys and girls clubs, you know, some uh, uh, private clubs, New York Athletic Club, Rochester Athletic Club, and so on. Uh, positive Coaching Alliance for uh, youth and, uh, and uh, uh, recreational sports. Just a whole bunch of different kinds of things that if you have any interest in sport, we can probably help you connect with it. Um, finally, I talked to you about, um, you know, the flexibility. We, you know, we have a major. We can combine those with majors in our college. We have different concentrations. We have different electives. You can minor very easily in things like marketing, communications, finance. Um, we try to get creative in terms of finding new internships and co-op experiences. If you like research, we'll help you, you know, get involved in writing a thesis, things of that nature. Um, and we encourage you to be open-minded, okay? Because again, this is, you know, we have a system that says it's 17 or 18, decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. You, know, you come here as a sport management, major, but you decide maybe I'd like to be hotel restaurant, or maybe I'd like to be psychology or something. You know, there's the ability to, to, to test all those things out, you know, and, and we here at Niagara University provide all those opportunities for you. Again, there's a Niagara Power, which is a tremendously innovative program. Nobody in the country, and no program in the country has a program like, the, like Niagara University does with the Niagara Power. So with that in mind, that's me, okay? Um, you know, if you have any questions, any any concerns, uh, as I said, if you want this, you know, I'm gonna send you a PowerPoint where you can play the videos, I'd be happy to do that as well. Uh, and for now, I think I will turn it over to Ben, who I would assume, uh, I would imagine Dr. Tutka is gonna get involved here as well. So I will do that and see where we go. Yeah, so, um... At this point, yeah, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn over um, to Dr. Tetka, allow him to introduce his, himself um, and to run through some things on his side. Good afternoon or good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of this. It will be my fifth class of teaching today, so I'm, I, I'm uh, rolling with it. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Patrick Tetka. Uh, I am an assistant professor here at Niagara University in sport management, my fifth year here. Uh, at Niagara. Um, I love what I do for a living. Um, I want to echo three things that uh, Professor Gentile said before I move on to talk about the power and a couple other things that I think are important. Um, first and foremost is um, Niagara University provides you with an incredible opportunity um, in any of the areas uh, that you want to talk about. So Trevor talked about the fact that he's in uh, CMAA, he's in um, uh, you know, our club, he's in a variety of other opportunities. Um, CMA is a club managers association of America, which Niagara has won the national award 10 years in a row um, or 11 years, whatever number it is now. We're, we're, we've been doing it for a long, long time, being the top club uh, managers association uh, student club in the world, um, which is awesome. And they have internships every summer uh, at some of the top clubs in the country. Um, as good as it gets. I mean, we're talking the elite of the elite uh, clubs in the country. So if you want to talk about that type of opportunity, um, it's as good as it gets. Um, you're talking about uh, opportunity. Um, you're talking about experiences. Um, you know, you've got a, a 50 year history. Uh, you know, when we started as TTT um, with a tourism degree, uh, all the way through to the current day um, of opportunities in our 800 hour experience. Uh, which separates you from anybody uh, that you will compete against for a job. Um, so when I talk about that, I mean, you're going to walk out of here with four or five, maybe six uh, experiential opportunities. Um, your competitors in the industry, when you're walking out at 22 years old, they're going to have one, maybe two, um, and you're going to be at the top of the resume pile. Um, what I always tell students is I can't promise you a job. Um, I can promise you an opportunity to interview for a job. Um, that's at, once you get to the interview stage, that's on you. 
Um, I can't, I can help you get prepared for an interview. I can help you get ready to go. And we have an awesome career services team that can do that as well. Um, but I can't promise you a job. I can certainly promise you an interview for an opportunity for a job because we have between the experience you're going to get here and the industry connections, um, we get lots of phone calls and we have no problem making uh, those connections work. Um, the third thing that I would say is, and it's the last thing that Professor Gentile um, mentioned is that, um, or one of the last things that he mentioned is that, um, you know, you're going to come here and we're expecting you at 18 years old to figure out what is going to uh, be your career path for the rest of your life. And I am the prime example of someone who is 18 years old, had my world figured out and, um, at 39, I'm still sometimes wonder if I have the exact uh, idea of exactly what I want to do with the rest of my life. Um, so what I'm, my point in that is, is you're going to have opportunities in this, in, uh, at Niagara University to, um, if you decide you want to minor in something, or if you decide you want to switch around a little bit, you're going to have that opportunity and you can still, in most cases, graduate in four years, which may not be as important to you, but it's certainly going to be important to your parents when it comes to paying um, for college. Um, that's huge when it comes to paying for college. Um, I took the um, seven-year undergraduate education plan. I very strongly discouraged that experience. Um, I have the student loans that show I took the seven-year undergraduate education plan. It took me longer to do my undergraduate education than I did do my master's and PhD. That's not good. Very, very bad. Don't do it. I highly discourage it. All right. So now that I've said my three things that relate to what Professor Gentile mentioned, um, I want to mention a couple of things that I think are really important. Um, first and foremost is experiential opportunities. Um, I talked to, talked about the 800 hour experience. Um, obviously, I'm unintentionally or you could argue I'm intentionally wearing my uh, Niagara Power gear. Uh, we started this program two years ago or three years ago now. Gosh, it's been feels like it's been uh uh, you know, I don't know, a million years ago sometimes. Uh, um, but Niagara Power provides you with an opportunity to run um, a collegiate wood bat summer league team, the equivalent of a low-level minor league team. And when I mean run, our students run it. The only thing you don't do on the field is we hire people like Ben, who actually coach, um, you know, for a living um, as part of their livelihood to um, hire the, or manage the team on the field. We have Stu Peterson, whose son Jock is uh, a player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, Stu played for the um, Syracuse Chiefs, now the Syracuse Mets, uh, for a decade. Um, he's going to be our manager for the 21 uh, season. So when we talk about bringing in people who have experience, that's a pretty good person to bring in to talk about managing the team on the field. Everything else, we handle. So operations, event operations, concessions, ticketing, merchandise, uh, deciding what we're going to sell in concessions and merchandise. Um, all of those pieces are handled by our students. Um, as far as operating the game itself and what happens inside the inside uh, South Megaloo Stadium in Niagara Falls, um, I'm there. I help. Um, but I want my students to get real world experience. And the only way you can get real world experience is to actually do. Um, and so one of the things that I'm huge on is actually letting you do, which means sometimes you might fail. And that's OK. You're going to make mistakes and we're going to have. Um, you know, I've, I've sold, I've had students sell a frozen hamburger, um, before I've had students, um, you know, make other mistakes. We had a read, um, in a PA announcer, uh, a couple years ago where they missed, they met, read the wrong read in the wrong half inning and it sent the marketing team scrambling back to our, um, area where we stage out of to go grab tennis or go grab balls to throw, uh, into the crowd, which was, um, as a, uh, 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 instructor. It was great to watch how fast the marketing team covered up the mistake of the PA announcer. Um, but there's no other experience that beats learning on the job and actually getting to really do it and getting to really run it. Um, so I don't view myself as, you know, I'm technically the director of the program. I don't view myself as the director of the program during the season. I view myself as the person who's there to help you guys solve problems. Um, and to help you guys get through and to kind of give you some guidance where I see there's opportunities to give guidance. Um, and so that's what my job is. Um, so we operate uh, and we bring college student athletes from around the country uh, who are getting scouted by Major League Baseball um, to come in and play. Um, and so you're going to have as many as we've had as many as a thousand fans in the building. Um, we've had as few as 90 or 80, depending on a cold Tuesday night in early June when it's 60 degrees. Um, but 
you're going to have the opportunity to run a whole oper operation from start to finish. Um, and that's something that I, and no other school in the country is going to give you the opportunity to do. Um, Professor Gentile mentioned the opportunity to work in the Division I athletic department. Um, I was just uh, earlier um, texting with uh, one of our graduates, Kyle Barker, uh, who runs our ESPN uh, Plus, ESPN3 program uh, here at Niagara University. He's a graduate of our program from now two years ago. Gosh, that makes me feel um, sort of old, I guess, in my own little weird way. Um, Professor Gentile, I won't ask you how many years of graduates you have, but, you know, it's been a couple. Um, uh, but anyways, um, so we brought this program in with the whole purpose of giving you real world opportunities to run a broadcast. Our students, except for the director's chair, um, in, in some cases, even that chair, because uh, it's been filled by a student before, um, they do all of it. They film, they produce, um, they are the person who handles the replays, they're the person who does all of the um, statistical stuff. They handle all of it. So when you talk about real world experience, it doesn't get any more real than that. Um, the other thing which Professor Gentile quickly mentioned um, is we have a division one athletic program here. Uh, if our sport management program did not exist, our division one athletic program would not exist. We run about 75 to 80% of our division one athletic program events um, through our students. If it was not for our students and their willingness to jump in and do uh, we would have a lot of problems running a Division One athletic program on this campus because our students are the people who run the tickets, who do the um, game operations, who are in the penalty box for hockey games, who are at the stat or at the scorers table for basketball, um, except for maybe one or two positions. Um, they do it all, and so when you talk about real world experience, you're walking in as an 18 year old. Yeah, you might go chase some tennis or some soccer balls, but by the time you're 21 years old and you're walking out of here in your last year you are, if you decide to be, in leadership positions and in opportunities to do some really cool things. Um, and that's as good as it gets from that standpoint. Um, I came from, I did my undergrad in, at Wayne State University. Um, I did my master's and PhD at Louisiana State University. Wayne State University is in Detroit, Michigan. Louisiana State University is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, 30,000 students at both universities. And I can tell you straight up that nobody cared whether I graduated or not. Um, and I uh, talk about this all the time with my students, Professor Gentile already mentioned it, um, but you develop relationships with us. There's three full-time faculty. Two of the three of them are on this call. Uh, Dr. Rohde is the third full-time faculty member who is not on this call tonight, um, but she would usually be in my position um, if it wasn't for the fact that I happen to be uh, available tonight. Um, you get to know us very well. Um, sometimes you probably maybe wish you didn't get to know us as well as you do, um, but you get to know us very well, and we're going to help you get through this experience um, and get you in and out of here with a really great education um, in hopefully four years and a lot of times less than four years, depending on what you bring with you. Um, and so that's a big time opportunity for you. Um, the last thing that I'll say before I shut up, because I could talk for hours, um, as Ben Asher and Professor Gentile and Professor Choi all, or Dr. Choi all know very well, and Bob Murphy has figured out, unfortunately, as well, um, is that uh, you are at an opportunity in your life to make decisions that are going to um, have a cool impact on your life. Um, and you're gonna have the opportunity to figure out a lot of things. Um, but I think the single most important thing that you need to figure out isn't necessarily what you want to do with your life, it's what you don't wanna do with your life. And what I mean by that is we have a sport management program. There's a thousand different directions that you can go in our field. And we're going to ask you um, to go out and get experience literally your first semester you walk onto this campus. Um, traditionally, uh, except here in COVID-19 this fall, this is probably the first fall and probably the entire history of the program, Professor Gentile, that our students in their first year here um, weren't working in college athletics uh, with the athletic department. Um, I don't know, you can tell me if I'm wrong on that, but it's probably not, it's been a long time. Um, so, we literally ask you to do 30 hours your freshman first semester you're here in SPM 275 um, with our sport or with our um, Division One athletic program, whether it's with ESPN, whether it's working games, whether it's chasing soccer balls or volleyballs or whatever other experiences. And you can find out very quickly what you don't like. And I think that's every bit as important as figuring out what you do like, because I'm an event facility guy. I don't mind chasing soccer balls. I could care less. Um, I like watching events go off. 
I don't need to have my hands in something in order to enjoy. Um, I like sitting back and watching my students run an event and seeing it work perfectly. Um, you know, I had no more joy than watching my students get to celebrate a championship and watching the student athletes get to celebrate a championship uh, in 2019 when the power won the championship. Um, you know, it was a blast not because we won a championship, but because the pure joy that those students got to experience of what it's like to be one of the few teams in the country to win a championship and walk off at the end of the year with a W. Because 99% of the teams that will compete every year walk off the, champ walk off the floor with an L. Um, and that's what I love to do. But I'm different than a lot of other people. There's people who like to do things like Professor Gentile has done, which is compliance and um, things like that that are really cool and really unique and interesting. Um, you know, there's um, video and all of that type of stuff. There's graphic design, there's social media. There's so many things in, in the sport world, but you have to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And, that, and it's equally important to figure out what you don't like, if not more important, because you're going to be asked to go out and enjoy life and you want to have fun living in your career the rest of your life. Because if you don't have fun doing it, it's going to be a miserable, not great experience. All right, so I want you to go out and have fun, enjoying life. Uh, if you're asking to get rich day one, uh, you're probably not going to get there. If you want to be rich by my age, um, don't be a professor, work in our industry, because there's a lot of people making a lot of money in my in this industry um, by the time they're 40. Um, there's a lot of people making a lot of money. I have good friends who are making way more money than I am as a professor, um, well north of $100,000 a year uh, in this industry um, with 15 to 18 years worth of experience. Um, and some making a lot more than that. Um, now, does everyone get there? No, but a lot of them do. So, you know, if you are willing to start out making twenty nine, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year for a few years, you can get very far in this industry um, if you're willing to do things. Uh, with that, I'll shut up and turn it over to Ben. Um, I'm also available anytime. I'll put my contact information in, in, in the chat. Um, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you wanna come this summer and experience the power um, this upcoming summer, you want to see what that looks like. Uh, we're always glad to have students show up and, and get engaged with our students who are working and, and do a job shadow opportunity or whatever the case may be. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tetka. That's, uh, you are right. It was a pleasure. Um, winning a championship obviously helped, right? Um, <laughs> that made it a pretty cool feeling. Um, but getting to see the students that had put in a lot of work was um, even from my side was, was, was huge. And, you know, not to, not to, you know, repeat a lot of what has been said, but I just want all you guys as um, potential students here that are listening in still here. I mean, um, th this piece of actually getting experience, um, as you can tell, is something that we as a university are very, very passionate about. It's what we believe in. Um, and it, it's, it's huge for when you, when you go into the industry. Every single person across the country that is a senior in college, graduating from sport management, they're all graduating with a degree that says they have the knowledge and skills that make them ready for the career. Um, so you have to find those little ways. How do I stand out? How am I going to be the best fit? Eventually, an employer is going to ask you, why should I hire you over the pile of applications that I have? Um, and if your answer is, well, I have a degree from this school, it's not gonna make you stand out because this other, the other potential employees are saying the same thing. But when you leave Niagara, your answer is going to be, I have four years of actual experience in the industry that separates me from any other candidate you have in your pool. Um, I can tell you as somebody who has been, in, been very recently in the position of bringing somebody in um, to a team, that it's not always about what the, what the degree is or where the degree is coming from. It's about those experiences. They wanna see what you've done, what you've experienced and, and what you can bring to the team. And I'm telling you um, to, to repeat everything that's been said, you're not gonna have any other experience at any other college across this country like you will have here at Niagara. If you're not a baseball person, that's okay. The experience working and running, uh, 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 baseball program that's very similar to a minor league program, it, it's, a, it's an experience that can translate to many other sports, to many other fields. We've got, I mean, I was in, a, I got, Dr. Tetka pulled me into a class one day 
where I got to help sit in a room with students as they were planning out our uniforms for the year. Um, and that conversation was going, the students were having it, and the students were fully in charge of it. And um, that's, again, that's not something that's happening anywhere else. So um, again, I'm sorry to repeat all of that, but I, I really believe that um, what they're saying is, is very important, this experiential piece um, that you need to have. You know, you have a blank piece of paper when you leave, and that blank piece of paper is what you're going to call your resume. Um, when you leave Niagara, you're not going to have a blank piece of paper, I, I promise you. Um, you're going to have a lot more to it. So. And can I jump in? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. Um, if you have a Twitter account and you're interested, go to Niagara's men ho men's hockey pro uh, page. I just asked Kyle because I was curious. Um, that is two. You will see that there's a new video releasing our uniforms for the 2021 season because uh, we just changed uh, partners. We're now partners with Warrior. Um, and that is uh, two of our undergrad students uh, with Kyle um, who did who did all that video editing and all the video work to release our do our video uniform release? Um, it's across all of our Niagara Hockey social media pages. I just wanted to share that because I I think it's cool to see when you talk about real world experience. Um, that's a junior and a sophomore um, who were out there doing video work with our student athletes to create a video um, to share the jersey release of a new of our New Jerseys for our men's hockey. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, and, and I also love what was said that within this this industry, you know, you gotta you gotta find not only what you want to do but what you don't want to do, and you gotta have those experiences. You know, a lot of times we look at the sport management um, or sport industry of having to work directly in, you know, with a sports team or something like that. Well, there's a whole other realm where you're just you're marketing, you know, at sport events, and your company isn't necessarily, you know a sport industry, but you're marketing there because you know that there's eyes on that. So there's there's so much that goes into this, so many industries, but then there are the big jobs in NBA and NFL and MLB, uh, ESPN, you know, all, all across. So um, those experiences, those getting exposed to those multiple facets of the sport management industry, uh, it's gonna happen right here at NU. And uh, I really, really hope that every single one of you is a part of it. Um, next year in, in 2021. Um, what I want to do next, um, I just want to see, Dr. Troy, I want to see, you know, uh, give you a moment here just to, to say hello. I know you said hi earlier, but I'd love to have you throw in a few more words to say hello um, and, and kind of chime in here a little bit as well, if you could, please. Well, I said hello because I want to give more time to our students. <laughs> rather than listening to you guys <laughs> well again as i said you know i I'm, I'm here at home uh i just came home early to have a nice dinner with my wife and uh i just rushed upstairs and uh just said, just want to really say hi and uh, as everybody said this is i i taught much bigger program that dr Taka or other 30 students that's cute school Thirty thousand. that's a really cute school i taught at ucf University of Central Florida, 73,000 students. My smallest class was 45, the bigger one was 150. Every semester I have almost 250 students, barely memorized their names and I struggled. I thought I signed up for, for being a professor, not professor, the teacher. I'm using high school term here, right? I really want to be a teacher rather than instructor or professor, whatever the, the professional term is. I couldn't do it because I just cannot pay any personal attention to my students. I felt really bad about that. I almost thought about going back to my home country, which is South Korea, not North, South, just to make sure. Um, but, you know, it's 2013, early, early spring, I got a phone call from up here and came here, 80, 85 degree old way up here. It was like 32 or something. And it was a wonderful two days of grueling interview, including Professor Gentile. They apologized for a very, very tight schedule. And I said, I only have a day and a half to get to know this school and students and faculty and staff. I fell in love with it. So never regretted it after that for the past seven and a half years. And even though we're, you know, my wife loves Florida, uh, I like cold winter weather and uh, I love students. I, I'm super excited to have Aaron Clark back, my former student who went to Peru program. 
And I thought she would go to Peru and live there forever, but I guess she had a little bit of different change in her mind. Trevor, obviously being sophomore, he's done probably most of the seniors, maybe 10% of seniors have done for their four plus years. So I really wish those students will share their experience, whether it's a year and a half or four plus years with this. Um, so without further ado, welcome. And I just met, uh, left a little bit of notice about upcoming open house. So you can see in person, Professor Gentile, maybe Professor Telka and myself, Ms. Bradshaw, and maybe our students, leaders. So I'm looking forward to meet with you if you can come to visit us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Choi. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna do uh, two quick things really quickly before I turn it over to a couple other people and then um, we'll do Q&A. Um, but I wanna do a quick quick plug, like Dr. Choi just said, um, there's not many schools across the country right now that are, are hosting anything in person. They haven't found the way, they haven't done anything like that. Um, here at Niagara, we very, very quickly, we knew that um, we needed to met, uh, you know, find a way. We needed to pivot a little bit. Um, and find ways that we could get in person because this is this is a, a time where you know I know some of you are kind of looking at transferring and I know some of you are freshmen and so you're trying to figure out you know where am I going to go what is the best fit for me and one of the easiest ways to do that is to be in person and experiencing doing the research online you can look at schools and you can find yourself um, you know in love with four or five schools that way because on 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 a website it looks great but until you see it in person <laughs> until you talk with people and actually get to know it you have no idea. And so, um, like I said, very quickly, we were able to move and find a way in order to host some events on campus. Um, you know, we brought our capacities down a little bit. We follow the guidelines by the state. Um, but as you mentioned, we have an open house coming up um, this weekend um, that there's still space available. If you guys, you know, have time, if you're in the local area, you can come up and see us please do, you know, this is all about sport management tonight. That's going to be a bigger piece to show you the university in general. Come out, see us, go on tour, talk with us, ask questions. And then the following weekend, we're going to do it again. Um, and both of those, we're also going to do a presentation that we're calling 12 North, um, which is going to kind of introduce um, this really, really in-depth way of, of finding the best college fit for you. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it. I kind of want to leave some of it out there so you guys will come see us. But I'm telling you, you know, this is a, a tough time for you, especially during um, a COVID world. And we have, um, I guess, what we would call the secret sauce to help you as a student. We're going to remove ourselves from Niagara for a little bit. We're going to talk just about finding the best fit. We're going to talk about diving into, you know, who your who your the big factors are in searching for a college, self-assessment, um, really diving deep into this comprehensive um, college search. Um, it's not your average every day. Here's trip. Here's tips and tricks to the process. It's a really, really in-depth um, look at this process. So come out, see us. Let's talk about that, and then let's talk more about Niagara as well. Um, so that's my plug for in-person visits. We're also doing daily visits. Come see us there as well. All of that. I'll throw in the link here in chat so you guys can see, you know, campus visits, how to register, how to link like that. Um, but what I'm going to do right now. Um, Hopefully, I'm sorry, Aaron, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, so as we mentioned, Aaron is um, a new new member to our admissions team. However, she was a graduate of the hospitality program. And that is where sport management falls. So Aaron, if I could, I'm going to ask you to maybe kind of just tell us your time here at Niagara, what you enjoyed. Um, and if you could, what you felt when you left Niagara prepared you for your next steps. So yeah, sure. So um, I came to Niagara in 2014, um, just about when Dr. Choi started his journey there as well. And he was the first person I met, and he was the reason that I chose Niagara. He wanted to get to know me as a person more than just a number. And the moment I met him and the rest of the faculty, I knew I was in the right place. Um, every year um, during my time there, I was always working. Um, I worked at the on-campus hockey rink. Even though I wasn't sports management, I got to see the concessions piece of everything. Um, as well as every summer, I did a different internship to see what I did and didn't like. Um, as any internship would teach you, now's the time to do it before you go and you have to make a big decision on what you wanna do for the rest of your life. I've changed jobs three times since I graduated um, and it's because Niagara taught me that not to settle for something I'm not happy with, to keep moving and getting better. I worked at um, 
Ticketmaster and did um, event programming, which we do have a lot of sports involved with that as well. We have the, it's worldwide, so you could really work with any um, sports program. We do the NHL, NFL, all things like that. Um, and I also worked in hotels, found that also wasn't my home, but now I'm back at Niagara, which is kind of funny that that's where I always felt that I was my best self. But Niagara has really provided every opportunity for me between the professors and the relationships we built with them. I work directly with Niagara Falls in the tourism industry, help develop things such as the Niagara Discovery Shuttle, as well as the Trek Center in downtown Niagara Falls. So you get real, real life opportunities in the community and outside in different cities, states, and there's also plenty of um, study abroad opportunities as well, which is probably the most valuable experience I had at Niagara. All right, back to you, Ben. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Um, thanks for chiming in a little bit. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to give you a big shout out. Um, she's um, she didn't say it, but Aaron was actually one of the the, the first thrower um, in Niagara track history, and she was the first graduate from the program as well. So, um, Aaron. Clark is a piece of Niagara history already. So, um, and we're super excited to have you back. I hope, you know, um, we've talked multiple times and, and I think you're in the, you're in the best place now. <laughs> um, all right, last person that I'm gonna have just kind of chime in really quickly. Um, if you have questions, please, please throw them in the chat or you can save them, you can ask them, um, you know, out loud if you want, but if you have questions we haven't talked about, throw them in the chat now. <clears throat> well, I have our last person chat really quickly. Um, Trevor, I just I just want you to kind of chime in, tell us your experience so far. Like, you know, like we said, Trevor's a sophomore currently. He literally, no joke, has done way more than any student probably will do in some of their four years. Um, but I, Trevor, if I could have you kind of chime in, what drew you to Niagara, what you love about what you're doing right now, and, and anything else you want to throw in before we go to Q&A? Yeah, for sure. Um, honestly, I think the biggest thing for me that kind of was the selling point for me for Niagara was really that family feel and that personal touch that I think everyone put on everything, whether that was the professors or the students or whoever it was. I think we really went above and beyond with pushing for our students to be more than just students, feel like people. And I felt like just from coming on campus, I ended out coming, I did an overnight and I stayed at the school for one night just to kind of go in, sit through some classes and stuff like that. Right before the class, like my professor, actually Professor Rohde, who works with the program, the professor that I sat in on a class is just as a student looking, she's like, oh, I don't know you. You're not from, um, you're definitely not a student here. What's your name? And like I got to, she introduced herself and we sat, we talked like five minutes before a class. Then after the class, she's like, hey, um, I saw you like taking notes and stuff like that. You want to come to my office after class? We sat down, we talked for like 20 minutes and just basically broke down the program for me. And she doesn't know who I am. That's where these professors are going above and beyond to get to know people. They're gonna to wanna to get to know you. They're gonna to wanna to get to know their students, not just have you be a student, but have you be a person. And that's something that just blows my mind still to this day about this school is how seriously we take people more than just a number, but as an actual person. And I definitely wanna highlight really quickly is the experience side, especially in the sports manager program here is incredible. That career services office, you express interest in anything, they're gonna figure out how to get you there. We're just uh, re-extended our contract with Pagula Sports and Entertainment. So we're working with them very closely. So Buffalo Bill Sabres, any of the people under their broad spectrum of sports, you want an internship there, we have connections to get you there. You wanna work with the Bisons, we have tons of people who work in the Bisons. We have the largest spectrum of people who work all over the place. You express interest with career services of some internship you wanna do, they're gonna figure it out. With working with our internship programs here at Niagara, I have literally been introduced to a whole ton of different opportunities and they're just pretty much handed to you. You go do the interview, if you do the interview well, you're good, we'll get you all those interviews, we'll get you to where you need to be. From there, you just gotta own yourself, be who you are and get that position. But this university is gonna give you those opportunities. Working with the Division I sports team is an incredible opportunity. You can do it as a work study, you can do it as a part-time job, or you can just do it as a student for experience and hours. That's how I did it and I fell in love with it. Working the cameras, working replays, I got to do pre and post game analysis for the basketball team, running stat sheets on the side, doing all the different sideline things, working scoreboard. I mean, it's the coolest experience of just being part of the whole operation. And like Professor Tucker said earlier, the school would not run without our students, with sport management students. Our division one program would not be able to function without our students here. 
So it really is, you are going to get beyond a hands-on opportunity. You're going to be a lot more than just a student, a lot more than just a number. You're going to be a person and we're going to go above and beyond to push you every step of the way. And I just, I'm so thankful for everything Niagara has provided for me. I can't wait for two more years here and possibly a master's degree here, but Niagara's already done so much, so much for me. I can't wait to see what is left in store, but honestly, I'm so happy everyone's on here and I hope to see everyone on campus at some point soon. Trevor does so much already, and he's already thinking about our masters here at Niagara. I love that. <laughs> um, so I've got a um, couple last plugs. Like I said, if you have questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, if not, we'll, we'll get you guys out of here um, here shortly. Um, but a couple things that I want to throw out there. I had mentioned at the very beginning, so I'm glad you guys all stayed on. I mentioned at the beginning, coming on to this event, every single one of you here has, has checked off one of three boxes in order to get yourself some additional um, funding. Um, going into your freshman year here at Niagara, or um, it's not your freshman year, your first year here at Niagara. We've introduced what we've called the Eagle Experience Scholarship. This is a one-time scholarship um, that will help you in your first year here at Niagara. Uh, it is an additional $1,500 that we will put on top of your merit, on top of any other scholarships or um, federal aid that you might be receiving. Um, so once you're admitted to Niagara, you would immediately know um, that you're admitted, you're admitted into the sport management program if that's the field you want, or if you're looking at something else, whatever it might be, you'll be admitted directly into that program, and you would also receive your merit scholarship. And then with this first year, you would then be getting your additional $1,500. Um, the other two things that you'd have to do, and this, so the second one um, is you would need to have your application in by November 1st. Um, it does not have to be a fully completed um, accepted application. We just need the application itself submitted prior to November 1st or on November 1st. Um, you know, we just want to know that you're you're interested. We want to be able to talk with you and walk through that process. If you don't have transcripts or anything, don't worry. We'll work with you to get those in a timely fashion so we can get you admitted. Um, the last piece, which is very important, is connecting with your counselor or connecting with someone in um, one of my counselors in the office. If um, you have any issues doing that, you can always reach out to me. I'd be happy to get you in touch. Um, you can go online. It's listed who's who's where, um, who, who's in charge of what schools. And you're going to be getting phone calls following this event. Every one of you has a counselor that is dedicated to you and students in your school. And you're going to get a phone call from them. I'm going to personally let all of my staff know, um, hey, we had a great group that logged in, and we want to be able to connect with them. Get you, get you in touch and be able to get them some additional funding. So I will let them know to reach out to every single one of you. And so if you, you know, for whatever reason um, you need to, we're gonna we're, we're gonna be there to, to connect with you, okay? Um, I did see that we've got a couple of um, questions, which are good. The first one is, um, let's see, can you apply and submit SAT scores at a later date? That is a great question. Um, that would be, I believe that was, Paul, correct? Um, Paul Shortino. If I'm wrong on that, I apologize. Um, I think that was um, what you said. Um, actually, Niagara University is, is we're test optional, completely test optional. Um, so you don't even have to submit SAT scores. Now, if you've taken them, you have good scores, you want to use them, please, by all means, go ahead, use them. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but if you have had any issues with COVID with taking them, if you've had, um, you know, or you took them and you don't like your scores, whatever it might be, we're test optional. We don't need your scores. Um, I can, we can kind of base who you are as a student off of the four years that you put in um, in high school rather than just the, you know, the um, four hours of um, the SAT that you took. So if for some reason you, um, you know, you don't want to use your scores, again, you don't have to. Um, but yes, to answer your question, you can apply, and then later on, you can submit your SAT scores. Going in that same realm, we will super score your SATs as well, SAT or ACT. Um, so if you don't know what that means, we'll take the best um, scores from each one, combine them for your best overall score. So um, we'll, we'll, we will really work with you and your SAT or ACT scores to make sure that we're utilizing them in the best way. If we need to utilize them, we will, or if we don't want to or don't need to, then we won't. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, let's see, I believe this is already mentioned, but I just want to make sure. Uh, 
Um, actually, so Dr. Tutka, I'm going to turn this over to you. I can answer it, but um, I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, so Michael asked, he wanted to make sure um, as students, we are able to work with the Niagara Power, not just during the summer, but over, um, not over the semester, but over the summer as well. Yes, absolutely. So the operation of the team happens uh, in June and July. Um, we have in-class experiential opportunities for our students um, with several of our classes during the semester in the spring and the fall. Um, so it is a year round set of opportunities. And then our leadership group, which is uh, student made up. So right now I have a junior in charge and we uh, have a graduate student as well. Um, but we'll be filling our other leadership position here soon um, who work with us year round. And sometimes, you know, they probably get driven nuts by me, but that's okay. Um, Cause I uh, challenge them to do things that is new to them. So it's good. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll speak that to, to that too, as one of the coaches for the program, you know, um, my first year with the power as the assistant coach, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, coach Asher, uh, my last name is Asher and coach Asher had his own series on, um, Snapchat for a little while. Um, one of the students that would do social media, she'd come into the dugout every every pregame. Um, I would set up my towel. I'd set up our lineup and everything out. Um, and so I had my own little series on Snapchat, which was cool. So um, I just, just the reason I told, tell you that is, yes, the students are there all summer. They're on the field. They actually took my son, and they were running um, this race across from first base to third base, all behind the um, – home plate they took my son and he was doing the race um and the students are doing all of that you know i've had times where um the the students come down and, and we're using them for scheming as well we're like they come ask us for the lineup we're like don't get our lineup first go get the other team so we can see what they're throwing out in lineup and then bring them back so teaching them those tricks but they're there every step of the way doing every single thing um we can um, hey, hey, Ben. Yes. Luke, Luke and I both want to ask Dr. Kutka where we can get one of those cool Niagara Power sweatshirts. <laughs> uh, we're actually out of these. We sold them, uh, some of them this summer. Uh, we're actually out of these right now, but um, we'll be getting some more in here uh, later on as we get closer to the start of the 2021 campaign. Um, but yeah, they're available at the stadium. They're available online and um, uh, this actually is, you know, if you're a Buffalo guy, this is actually a new era Niagara Power sweatshirt. So, I mean, this isn't just any Niagara Power. This is new era Niagara Power. So, you know, if you're a Buffalo person, that's, that's big time. Um, you know, we'll have to work on that. We'll have to work on maybe doing some Niagara Power shirts for the, some incoming sport management students. We have to work on that as an admissions department. Hey, you um, let you let me know, Ben. You just let me know. I'm here. I'm I'm glad to help. I'll talk. To, I'll talk to. I'll talk to my boss about that. Um, okay. So the next question was. Um, it was from Gavin. Do some of the merit scholarships require SAT scores, even though NU is test optional? Um, Gavin, I can tell you that right now there's a, a very in depth conversation being had, um, and I can tell you we're hoping within this week that we'll be able to finalize. Um, that we will not require the SAT scores for the highest level. Uh, it used to be that it was the highest level um, that did require it, but with everything that's going on as a university, we couldn't, we can't stand by and say that we have to re require that. And so um, I don't know if, if Bob kind of said he wants to chime in, so I'm going to let him take that because he's the man running the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, thanks, Ben. Uh, it, and that, that decision was just made uh, by our president that, uh, the, one of the, 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 the largest scholarship we have, the trustee scholarship, $23,000, uh, was always a, a requirement was the trustee. Um, and in this particular case, uh, this year, because of COVID and the inability of people take, to take the SAT in June, as uh, their seniors on this call know that, um, so uh, we're going to waive that. And we're just going to look at your uh, your transcript and make that decision. So the SAT will be waived from that decision. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for that information. Um, really appreciate that. And, and you know, just a caveat, you know, it's it's been such a crazy year that we want to, as a university, if you can if you can't tell, we're all about trying to help in every single way, making sure students are maximizing every single thing they can, all the way from the admissions process when they graduate. And so that's just another piece that as a university, 
we looked at. We couldn't see how it made any sense. And so we're, again, I guess kind of the word is we're, we're pivoting um, in this moment to, to make sure that we are accommodating and doing everything we can for you guys as students. Um, Taylor has a good question. I'm from Canada and for university programs here, there are prerequisite classes that you have to take in high school. Is there anything like that for this program? Um, Dr. Gentile, I'll kind of turn that to you. Um, my immediate response to that would be um, no, but I'll let Dr. Gentile kind of take that if you could. Uh, yeah, that's correct, uh, Ben. There isn't, um, you know, certainly for the major, there is not. Um, we would take, you know, for any student, you know, whether they're uh, um, domestic or Canada or another country, um, some of the general education requirements, we will look at their high school records or if they have a, if they do decide to submit a, a SAT score uh, to see what their placement might be in things like writing and math. Um, and then there may be something that we will have them take, um, you know, as a prerequisite to something else. But for the pro, for our program, not at all. Um, generally speaking, the high school, the high school degree um, is, is pretty much it. And um, you come in ready to go at that point in time, um, you know, for, you know, I don't know if it's any of the equivalents in Canada, certainly AP classes in the United States, uh, there may be some transfer credits. Uh, if anybody's done any, any, uh, college level credit in Canada or otherwise, you can certainly seek to have those uh, transferred in as well. But there are no prerequisites for our program. Um, I did notice that we have a couple st uh, students that are on from, from Canada tonight. Um, so thank you for, for all of you for joining in as well. Um, I just want to tell you, you guys have an amazing counselor um, that is going to work with you. His name is Mark Stewart. Uh, I don't think you'll, you'll find a, a, nicer, a nicer guy even though um, whenever I meet somebody from Canada, um, always a pleasure to talk to them. Very nice. Um, but Mark Stewart is, is one of the best. Um, you know, he, one, he's a very sport-minded individual, so you might have some really good conversations with him. Um, but he lives and, and, and operates, um, you know, not far from the, from the border here. So um, if you need somebody to talk to, uh, he, he's going to be your guy. He'll be there every minute, every step of the way. Whatever questions you have, um, you know, reach out to him and he's going to help out. So great question. Um, do you need to take the TOEFL test if your country is an English country? Um, no, I, you do not. Um, Dr. Choi was shaking his head. So I wonder if he's got some more info there. <laughs> yeah. Korea was not an English country. So I had to take <laughs> TOEFL maybe 40 years ago. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, if you're an English speaking country, no, it's exempt. Yeah. I assume Canada is English speaking and French. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, for that question, we can, again, we can get you in, in contact um, with anyone that you need to make sure. But if, the, if your country is an English speaking country, um, the answer is no, you do not require the Um. Good questions. Does anybody have any other questions they want to throw in the chat? Um, and and Brian, um, that was a, that was a really good question. If you need, um, if you can, um, I'm going to send you an email afterwards so we can talk further and just make sure I got you in contact with the right people. Um, so maybe they can they can dive a little bit more into it. But um, yeah, any other questions you guys have? Really quickly, either unmute, throw them out there, or throw them in the chat. Um, any closing remarks from anybody um, on our side from uh, sport management, from admissions? I, yeah, I just, you know, to, to reemphasize what you said, man, I think, you know, if you haven't been to Nye University, I think you owe it to yourself to make to make a trip here at, at, at your earliest convenience. I know for the Canadian folks, it might be a little more difficult. Uh, but certainly, you know, to, to get, you know, to get a feel for what we're talking about, you know, you, you see how it fits on this campus. You know, you see how close it is and how, how intimate it is and how everybody interacts, even even with our masks on. You know, and, and I, I want to say that, that I think we have done a great job of getting back in person uh, on campus to teach in person because it is definitely the best way to do this. It's definitely the best way to teach. And, um, you know, all of our faculty have been really, really receptive and done a lot of good, good work both in person and then also being adaptable on the outside. So you, if you get a chance to come, you can. And for those of you, of you out there, uh, our, our Canadian friends, I just want you to know my mother was Canadian. So I speak Canadian fluently. So you and I should be able to communicate very well. So. True. Um, 
That's that's pretty funny. Um, I'm originally born and raised in Nebraska, and I came here. And the first time I started talking to Mark Stewart, uh, he asked me um, where I got my toque from, and I, was like, <laughs> I had no idea what he was talking about. And then he, he, he taught me the lingo a little bit better. So, um, Alex, thank you very much. That was very informative. Thank you. I'm coming to open house October 17th. Uh, Alex, we look forward to seeing you. And actually, I brought a really funny, a good point, Mike, um, um, Dr. Gentile. We actually had a student today that was on campus from Canada. Um, oh. She had said, I don't know, I don't know what's, what the deal was, um, but she said for educational purposes, that there was a way to come across the border. So right. don't know the details on that. If you are a Canadian student, maybe look into that deeper. We can look into it as well. Obviously, we want to because um, we have really good relations over there. Right. Uh, but mm-hmm. there, there was a student on campus that she was able to come wow. across for educational purposes today. So uh, look out for that. Must, um, be any, must be an essential student. I love that. All, yeah, all students at Niagara are essential students. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, we've got a lot of people saying thank you. Thank you very much for logging in. Um, I hope this was informative. Again, if you need anything, reach out to us. Um, We've got in-person visits coming up. Otherwise, I'm going to I'm gonna call it a night and, and let you guys go and, and finish your night and, and doing whatever you want to do. And don't be afraid to reach out to us directly. Please do. Thanks, everyone. Right, thank guys. you. Thank you, Mr. Asher and Mr. Murphy, to arrange this. And thank you. Thank you, all folks. Of course. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Aaron, thanks for logging on. Trevor, Dr. Choi. See you, Aaron. Thank Trevor. you, everyone. Bye-bye.